Hello everyone, welcome back to Planet Linux. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Linux distribution that's very near and dear to my heart, and that is Ubuntu Unity. As the name implies, this is a flavor of Ubuntu, however it is an unofficial one. That said, it really gets a lot of treatment that makes it feel just as polished as any other official flavor of Ubuntu. Also, as the name suggests, this uses the now-defunct Unity desktop and has really brought it back from the dead. But before we get into this distribution too much, I'd like to give a brief 60-second history lesson about exactly what Unity is and why it was used, as well as why it isn't anymore. From the time that Ubuntu was first created in 2004 through about 2010, they used the GNOME desktop, version 2 at the time and this served users very well. It was a great user experience overall. However, in time for 2011, GNOME 3 was released that completely redesigned and reimagined the desktop user experience. And for better or for worse, this really did change the user interface and how people were meant to interact with their desktop. And Canonical, the company that makes Ubuntu, felt that this was just too drastic and went against the philosophy of a lot of the user interface and design that they had been trying to build. So, for the 2011 release of Ubuntu, they created their own desktop environment called Unity. This aimed to retain some of the design elements from the GNOME 2 days, but also continue to develop their own set of features that they felt users would appreciate. That said, the initial versions of Unity did not get such great reception. Uh, they were plagued with bugs, slow performance, and overall lack of polish that really took away from the user experience that people had come to know with Ubuntu. However, as the years went on, this did get markedly better. That said, by 2017, Canonical had really tried to expand their scope of development with the Unity desktop so much, they were trying to create a phone version of it that could connect your computer to your phone, all running the same operating system. Uh, they really expanded their focus so broadly that they eventually felt they just couldn't keep up with the pace of development, and decided that by this point, GNOME 3 was at a point that it would be suitable to use with Ubuntu. So, in 2017, they decided to ditch the Unity project altogether and switch over to GNOME 3 as the desktop environment for future versions of Ubuntu, which is what they're still using today. That said, especially around the year 2014, Unity hit this point where it had seen continuous improvement, many of the bugs were fixed, the performance was improved, and by this time, it had really become a stable and feature-rich desktop environment. A lot of the people that had mixed opinions about it in the beginning had really begun to love it. And even many of the people that hated it from the get-go uh, were starting to warm up to it. Whether you were a fan of it or not, it could not be denied around 2014-2015 that Ubuntu with the Unity desktop was an incredibly stable and user-friendly experience that offered a lot of great features that many other desktop environments just didn't. And I think that's where the nostalgia and the appeal of this distribution, Ubuntu Unity, comes from. It's a revival of this dead desktop environment that many people feel, by the time it got good, should not have been killed off because it had so many things that made it great. And that's really where I want to start in today's review. I want to look at some of the features that make the Unity desktop so good. And we'll start right here on the desktop. We'll start with the dash. You'd access it either with this top button here or by pressing the super key. And this looks pretty typical to a lot of your full screen launchers. It shows all your recent applications and files here on the main screen. However, the features of the dash really go well above and beyond what you'd expect. Along the bottom here, you have your different lenses, which allow you to view your different types of content. Obviously here you have applications, which is pretty self-explanatory. You can view your recent apps or all of them in a list. But you also have lenses for documents, as well as some frequent folder locations on your system, uh, videos, music, and pictures, none of which I really have on here right now. But the appeal to this was that if you had files of a specific type that you accessed regularly, 
such as there was always a certain song you liked to listen to. Instead of having to go into the music app and find that song, you could just open up the dash from anywhere, click on the music lens, and your most frequent music would be right here. Now this also had a powerful search functionality that allowed you to search for all these different files uh, directly from here. So not only would it search for your apps or settings or documents, but you know any type of file or location on the system. Now the Dash also had integration with web search results, most notoriously and infamously Amazon search results. Fortunately, this functionality is disabled by default here in Ubuntu Unity, as a lot of people just felt that it cluttered the whole experience. But if you're looking to mess around with getting some web results in here as well, that is a feature that can be enabled. The next feature that I really love about Unity is just how well it makes use of screen space. When you have applications open, the menu bar by default appears in the top panel here instead of being an extra toolbar in the window. While this may not seem like a huge change, other than one more thing to get used to, it actually really helps to save screen space. Having the menu bar move to this top panel that would otherwise be mostly empty really does help to free up more space in the window for the main content. This is especially noticeable when you maximize the window. Not only can it get rid of the menu bar, but it can also move the whole window title bar and controls into the top panel. Having your close, minimize, and maximize buttons, as well as the menu bar up here, frees up a lot of space for most of your screen to be just the content of the window itself. And if you choose to auto-hide this sidebar, you get even more screen real estate. Now talk of the menu bar brings me into the last big feature that I really appreciate about Unity, and that is the HUD, or the heads-up display. We'll use LibreOffice as a good example of this, but the heads-up display allows you to search an application's menu bars just by typing what you're looking for. So LibreOffice is a really good example of a program that has a ton of options, uh, some of which are in these toolbars, but many of which are tucked away in their various menus. And there's a lot of things in here, and it can be very difficult to remember where everything is at. Fortunately, Unity has the HUD that allows you to simply press the ALT key to bring up this search box that allows you to type the option you're looking for, and it will search through all of the program's menus to find it. For example, if we can't remember where to go to put page numbers in our document, we can press the ALT key here and type page number. And right here it has the option to insert page number. And we can just click or press enter on this to do so. This works for any option that's in any of the menu bars. So the same thing could work if we want to make some of our font superscript. For example, we could write out some text. If we select some of that, and we want to make this word superscript, we can just press Alt, type our search result, press Enter, and it's done it instead of having to dig through all of these menus ourselves to try and remember where that option is. But the nice thing is that it also shows where those options are. So if I type that again, it gives us the option here, but it also shows where that menu is located. It's in the format menu under the text menu. So it gives you an idea of where it is for future reference as well. While all of these are specific features of Unity itself, uh, Ubuntu Unity as a distribution has done a great job of bringing all of these features in and keeping the underlying system very stable, while at the same time modernizing a lot of aspects. Of course, as you can see, this is using the current modern Ubuntu themes, slightly modified for this distro, but it does a great job of bringing in the previous desktop environment up into the modern age in line with all of your other Ubuntu flavors. That said, there are just a couple quirks, uh, small little things that do take away from the experience a little bit, and while I don't think they should be deal breakers for anyone, I do feel the need to discuss them. First of all, if we take a look at system settings here, this has pretty much everything you'd need. Uh, they've done a great job of combining most of the system settings all into this one place and making sure they all work well. Uh, this is a surprisingly difficult task when you're trying to bring an older deprecated desktop environment onto a current distribution platform. Uh, making sure that all of these settings work as intended uh, and are all in one place is quite difficult, but they've done a pretty good job here. Pretty much everything you'd need to adjust on the system 
is in here. However, there are a couple weird quirks. Uh, first off, with themes, if you go into Appearance, where you can change your background, uh, this purple one was a default, by the way, but it seemed a little bright for the whole video. Uh, you'll notice this box here, and if you go in here, you have a list of some themes. However, this isn't actually showing all of the themes installed on the system. Uh, this is only showing the themes that were originally built into Unity back in the day when it was officially used with Ubuntu. Uh, for example, this radiance, the, or this ambience theme rather, was the default theme in Ubuntu through 2017, I believe. And the problem is, if you ever select one of these, there's no way to get back to the theme you were using. Uh, these, none of these are it. These were all themes back from the Unity days. So at this point, you're seemingly stuck with this theme, and that's where another piece of software called the Unity Tweak Tool comes in. Now, the Unity Tweak Tool has some further advanced settings that allow you to customize the Unity Desktop uh, beyond what the standard system settings do. And there's a lot of great stuff in here. It's definitely worth diving into on your own because there's a lot of great things. This is where you could choose if you didn't want the menu bars up in this panel and you wanted them in the window itself, you could do that in here. There's a lot of tweaks that you can do. Uh, but this is also where you have to go to uh, set your system themes. This list here will properly show all of the themes on the system. So in this case, we were using Yaru Unity Dark, and we need to make sure to also set our icons back to the same thing, as well as our cursor. Uh, the really, really the only downside to all of this is that the Unity Tweak tool is not installed by default. For something that seems so integral to this distribution, it seems like it should be installed as an application out of the box. However, it isn't. Uh, if you want to get it, you'd have to go into software or into the terminal and install it yourself. It's called the Unity Tweak Tool. So it's not too difficult to get. I just wish that it were included by default, uh, as it has a lot of necessary options, or ideally, if they could just combine its options into the default system settings here at some point. Like I said, it's not inherently a deal breaker, but if you ever do anything that you'd need the Unity Tweak Tool for, it would be nice to have it installed out of the box. On the note of themes, one other quick quirk that I've noticed is that for whatever reason, Firefox does not respect the system theme. It's got this nice dark theme throughout the system, but then Firefox is bright white. It just uses the default GNOME theme. I believe there are workarounds for this, uh, however, I haven't found one that has worked yet <laughs> here in Ubuntu Unity. Uh, so, you know, feel free to take a look at this if you really want. I do believe some other browsers will work properly with the theming. However, out of the box, Firefox does not for one reason or another. Again, it's a small quirk, but one that is worth noting. And finally, one that's a bit confusing to me is that there are two update managers here in Ubuntu Unity. By default, most flavors of Ubuntu use this software updater application. And this will come up whenever there's updates here and just say, hey, you've got some updates that need to be installed. Such as so. Uh, it's got some that's ready for me to restart my computer for. And this is fine. This is what most flavors of Ubuntu use. However, the system also manages updates through the GNOME Software Center or in this case, Ubuntu software. And right now, this is saying it's up to date, even though the other one here says there's updates ready to be installed. And this kind of becomes a problem. Theoretically, you could use either that you prefer. Uh, however, they both have a habit of popping up every once in a while to say, hey, you have updates to install. And they don't necessarily recognize what the other has already done. So, such as in this case, the regular Ubuntu software updater recognizes that it has updates ready to install, but the GNOME Software Center, for one reason or another, doesn't see those. Uh, and there will be times where you may install updates with one of them, and the other will still say they need to be installed. And at times, one of them will pop up an automatic dialog to say there's updates, and you'll install them, all will be good, everything will be all set, and then the other one will come up later and say, there's still those updates that need to be installed. Uh, so this is definitely a weird situation. I'm not real sure 
why both of these are in here. I understand the updates tab is built into the software center, so I suppose what they really should try to do is get this to work as expected, show all of the updates properly, and then perhaps ditch this regular software updater, unless they're going to consider moving to a different software center that doesn't include the updates. My point being, there's two update managers, and they sometimes conflict with one another. Ultimately, if you use the terminal to install updates, none of this really matters, but it can be kind of strange to have installed updates only for something to tell you you need to install them again, and then be like, oh, never mind, they're done already. So, kind of strange. That said, overall there really isn't too much more for me to complain about here, and honestly, all those little quirks are just that, little quirks. and. I don't think they take away from the overall user experience that much, because everything else about this is so great. Uh, the features that Unity has brought to the table are fantastic, and having them back here in a modern distribution is truly amazing. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of these quirks will be resolved in due time, because unlike a lot of unofficial Ubuntu flavors that pop up for a version or two and then just lose any development, this one's been around for a while. Ubuntu Unity released 20.04, the last long-term support release nearly two years ago, and has put out interim releases over the past two years. And they seem poised to release 22.04 here in a few months from now. So development is incredibly active for being just a community-driven release that doesn't have any official support from Canonical. I have no doubt that improvements will continue to be made and that they'll be able to address a lot of these issues over time. Even as it stands right now though, with those little quirks, this is overall a fantastic experience. If you're someone that appreciated Unity back in the day, you liked any of the features it brought to the table, or you think any of them look interesting now, I definitely recommend giving this a try because the overall experience has been incredibly stable and cohesive. I'm certainly going to be running it as my daily driver for at least the next little while here, and I recommend that you give it a try as well. That said, that about wraps things up here. If you've enjoyed everything I've talked about today, a like would be greatly appreciated. It really shows me how many of you are enjoying this content. If you have any feedback, feel free to leave it down in the comments section. And if you'd like to stay up to date with all of the latest content that I'm putting out, please consider subscribing to the channel and following me on Twitter at PlanetLinux98. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you next time.